Hey everybody, uh, I know it's been a while since my last post. I've been actually rebuilding my machine from the ground up. Uh, my last machine was based on a design by David Steele of SaulSilva.com. And in this iteration, I pretty much kept the, the same dimensions as far as my cutting area. But there are some obvious design features which I... Uh, decided to do. First you can see uh, I used one inch phenolic throughout. A lot stiffer than wood of the same thickness. Almost as uh, strong as aluminum and easy to cut with uh, woodworking tools. In fact I cut a lot of these parts of my old Soul Silver machine. If you could uh, see it there in the background. Uh, we're going to put that together, my buddy and I, and we're going to use that as a secondary machine. Anyway, uh, the second improvement I made was for the Z carriage. I kept overall the same design, except I have three bearings instead of two on uh, each corner, which gives me a little more... Uh, a little more uh, support as far as load. Instead of a uh, steel tube, I used drill rod, which is solid three-quarter inch. It's uh, a lot stiffer, a lot heavier. I have a larger router. It's a two and a quarter horsepower Bosch. Uh, another improvement I made is the linear rails for the X and Y axis. For my last one, I used roller skate bearings and aluminum tube. For this machine, I got these surplus linear rails of 43 series from Roll-On. Got them on eBay pretty cheap. They uh, can withstand a lot of abuse. They're pretty heavy duty, as you can see uh, from the looks of them. I uh, also made improvements to my motor mounts as you can see up here although I used uh, half inch uh, high density plastic it's still pretty stiff I got four bolts instead of three and uh, you can see the motor base is inset to my motor mount which gives it pretty good rigidity also updated my bearing blocks uh, since I'm not doing any crazy heavy routing I still have the uh, regular bearings in there but I hope to upgrade to some uh, radial ball bearings uh, or axial ball bearings now the other modification I made was to my x-axis my dual uh, lead screw system here what I did was I made a motor mount where I can adjust the tension by pushing the motor up or down as you can see uh, my belt was a little longer and I didn't have the cash to go out and buy a new belt so I put four bearings in a W configuration so it takes up the slack a little bit better it kind of looks cool. Anyway, uh, I'll move the table around. Now, uh, I'm limiting the feed rate uh, on my rapids, actually my rapid rate, to 200 inch per minute because the table's still a little bit flimsy, as you can see, and uh, computer shaking. Oh, by the way, I also put the computer up top, which makes it a little bit easier for me to... Uh, adjust the settings etc without a I used to squat down and crawl underneath the table to do it but now I have the computer at top which makes it a bit easier so anyway uh, let's watch the movement here's the X as you can see everything's running pretty smooth uh, I get very smooth movement with these uh, roll-on linear rails. They're a heck of a lot cheaper on eBay than 
some of the other stuff, but uh, it may be just a little bit harder to implement in uh, to a CNC design. Okay. Now the Y axis. So it is my hope that with these improvements, uh, my last router table had a one horsepower Craftsman trim router, and with this larger router and the heavier bearings, I hope I can take uh, larger passes. Uh, it is strong enough where I feel I can put a three horsepower router here as my needs progress but for now this will do there's actually a spine of a uh, PVC in that uh, z-axis cable that I put in between the cable and the uh, cable wrap which keeps it off the table. On my old table, I just let it drape down. Uh, move the Z a little bit. I keep the speed on my Z at 125 inch per minute. And that's it. In the coming weeks, I should be posting some cutting videos anyway thanks for watching